so hello guys i hope you can hear me uh so today i want to talk to you about uh reducing memory footprint but let uh, let me share your my screen with you uh okay i hope you can see it uh okay so in this presentation i want to share with you some tips on um uh, uh, on how to reduce memory footprint of your app. Uh, but let me assure you, it's not yet another presentation about canary uh, on or finding memory leaks. Uh, okay, so I just, is it better now? Okay. <laughs> Great. Uh, I hope the, the sound is better now. Uh, cool, cool. Uh, so let me start, start from introducing myself and explaining a little why I started uh, researching this topic. Uh, my name is uh, Paulina Sadowska and I work as an Android developer at Allegro. And uh, if you are not from Poland, you might have not heard about us, but in Poland we are pretty recognizable. Uh, Allegro is the largest online shopping platform in Poland and our Android app alone has over 10 million installs. So we are def definitely past the startup phase and making sure that our app is fast and stable is of course very important. And uh, we also do a lot of UX tests um, to find out how changes in our app uh, influence user's behavior. And that's during one of those tests, uh, we found something very interesting that started my whole research on memory consumption. Um, in this experiment, uh, we compared two variants of uh, product screen. Uh, in the first, first variant, uh, product description, uh, uh, you can't hear about that. Uh, is, is that all still there? Uh, click the sound off. Okay, uh, one, one second, sorry. Uh, is it better now? <laughs> okay, cool. I, I hope we <laughs> it will be better now. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, okay, so... Uh, <laughs> cool. Uh, so, as I said, um, in this experiment, we compared two variants of product screen. Uh, in the first variant, uh, product description was uh, cropped at the bottom and consisted only of text, and user was able to see the uh, full uh, product description with images but on the separate screen. And in the second variant, a full product description was uh, displayed uh, alongside with all the images on the same uh, activity that other information about the product. And um, as it turns out, uh, as it turns out, uh, the second variant was definitely better when it comes to conversion. So you should obviously uh, implement that in the app. But also, unfortunately, we noticed that in this variant, number of out-of-memory errors uh, is significantly higher, especially on low-end devices. So uh, that's where my job began. I got the chance to spend some time looking at this problem and to see what we can do about it. Uh, the main problem with fixing out-of-memory errors is that the stack trace we see in crash reports hardly even pinpoint the real cause of the problem. Well, very often, uh, excessive memory consumption is not caused by just one big mistake, but by many smaller or bigger non-optimal decisions which just quickly adapt and finally app crashes. So what are the ways to deal with those problems? Um, the, uh, one of the approaches is to use Lee Canary the tool that can notify you about possible memory leak while you are using your app in the bug variant. Um, if you open that notification, in Leak Canary app, you can see exactly what field leaked and what was the cause of that leak. A similar function is also now embedded in Profiler. When you make memory heap dump, you can select uh, this checkbox to see what activities or fragments are probably leaking. So that's one of the one approach. But as I mentioned, I work in quite a big company. We are using Leak Canary for a very long time. So neither by looking at Leak Canary nor by looking for possible leaks in the profiler, well, I, I found nothing. 
but does it mean that everything was fine? Definitely no. The out of memory errors were still there. I just needed a, a little bit different approach to get rid of them. So I decided to go through the basic path that leads to product screen and just look into memory heap dump uh, to see if there is anything suspicious. So I opened our main page, scrolled it a bit, typed some search phrase and open search results page, uh, then clicked on the product and open product screen and just look uh, at uh, memory heap dump. And when I was looking at it, I found something very, very odd. Just look at the number of bitmaps allocated in the memory. It's over 150. There's no way that in product screen alone, we display over 100 bitmaps. And it was after disabling memory cache. It got even more suspicious when I started looking at what bitmaps are stored in the memory. This image, for example, uh, if you were looking closely at the path I was presenting to you, you might have noticed that this image was not displayed on the product screen. Uh, it was not, also not on the search results page. Uh, it was displayed on the main page at the very, very top here. So something was definitely wrong and needed investigation. Um, but let's just start from the basics. As most apps, uh, we used third-party library to take care of all the complex stuff connected with image loading. Uh, Glide takes care of us, uh, for us, uh, of uh, media decoding, caching, and canceling requests and clearing resources. It does it uh, for us uh, on destroy, when the activity or fragment is destroyed. Um, so if Glide takes care of clearing resources for us, why we have that many bitmaps stored in the memory? Well, the first problem that I found uh, was caused by the fact that yes, Glide clears resources for us, but it does it on destroy. Why does it problem? Uh, let's look once again at the path I was analyzing. Uh, when I open search results activity, the main page, main activity, goes into the background, but it's only stopped, it's not destroyed. So all images displayed on this activity cannot be freed from the memory because Glide clears resources on the stripe. Also, after I open product page, page, search results activity is not destroyed, so all bitmaps cannot be released. So no wonder I saw an image from main page still in the memory while being on product screen. But why Glide does that? Because it's obviously not a bug. Um, to see why, uh, let's look at what would happen if we cleared resources manually in OnStop. Because, of course, we can clear those resources manually, and I will show you how uh, in a while. Um, in our app, the images were loaded in OnView Created. When we open search results page, OnStop is called in main page activity, so resources are manually freed from the memory as we agreed. Uh, but what will happen when we press back? Uh, the main page will appear, but without any images. Uh, that's because the images were freed from the memory and they were not reloaded because on the created is not called in that case. Uh, it doesn't mean, of course, we cannot clear resources on stop. We just have to make sure that images are loaded in on start or later in on resume. Uh, so that way, when we go back to main page, the images will reload and everything, everything will look perfect. Uh, well, almost perfect. Um, it might not be visible for all users, but because the image has to reload, uh, uh, it might not be available right away, especially if uh, this image was removed from cache. Uh, so this image might not be uh, visible for, uh, for a user for a bit. It might be visible for a user that, um, that this image reloads. It doesn't, of course, uh, have to be a deal breaker. It's just good to be aware of it and decide for yourself if it's okay. Um, okay, so to manually clear, clear resources in Glide, you just uh, you can just use clear function, which will cancel cancel all pending requests and free all resources. 
Uh, in Picasso, it's a little differently. Uh, you have to call cancel request function to cancel all pending requests and call a sad image drawable with null to free resources. Uh, okay, so that was the first finding that, that allowed me to save some memory. Um, the second problem that I found was not directly connected with how images are loaded um, or freed, but how recycler view works, or precisely how recycler view pool works. Uh, when we scroll recycle view and the item goes off the screen, it's not removed from the memory, but it's moved into recycle view pool. Thanks to that, when we want to display another item, the new view doesn't have to be created. Recycle view just reuses views from the pool, and that way scrolling is a bit more smooth. Uh, it gets a bit more complicated when we have multiple view types. Uh, when we scroll and an item goes off the screen, it also goes into the pool. However, if the next item does not have the same type as the one stored in the view pool, uh, the new view has to be created and the old view just stays in the pool for a while. And because of that, also in the memory. Only after we scroll a little bit more, the new view goes uh, off the screen, it goes into the view pool, and when the new item uh, new item view type matches uh, the old uh, matches the old view that is stored in the pool uh, this view can be reused uh, why am i mentioning this uh, our main page was also implemented as a one big list in the recycler view just with different view types uh, i highlighted those uh, those different view types using different outline colors so when the user scroll the page, uh, top views goes into the pool, like that. As, and they are views, the, the, those views are not removed from the memory. Uh, and because of that, also those images stay in the memory. Um, only after we scroll page a lot more, there are finally views uh, that map type stored in the memory needed. Uh, Okay, no, I, sorry, sorry, I, I so uh, I, I just distracted for a chat. Uh, so um, only when we start uh, scroll page a lot more, there are finally views that match type stored in the memory needed. Uh, <laughs> and uh, those uh, old views can be, can be reused. And only then all old, uh, old images can be released from the memory, uh, like that. Uh, and this big one, this uh, big image, uh, I found earlier in profiler, still stays in the view pool, so also in the memory, uh, not because it's, uh, it was not uh, uh, reused yet. Um, so what we can do to reduce memory footprint in that case? Because obviously we don't want to uh, disable reusing views by the recycler view altogether, it would be very bad for scroll performance. Uh, you can free resources from memory manually when the view is being recycled, so right before it goes into the view pool. In guide by using clear methods uh, I should, uh, that I showed you earlier, and in Picasso by calling cancel request and resetting image drawable. Okay, so that was the second problem that I found, the second, uh, uh, the second way that I could save some memory. Uh, the third problem was also connected with the recycler view, but was a bit different. It was caused by the fact that in our, uh, in our product page, which also uses recycler view, product description was displayed as just one very long item on the list. Uh, why it was a problem? Well, when users scrolled product page, and some portion of the description is no longer visible, it still, can, it still, it still cannot be moved to the pool uh, because part of this item is still, still visible. Only after we scroll a lot more, so whole product description is no longer visible, this huge view can be moved into the pool. What's worse, this view cannot be reused because there is only one view of that type on this page. It can also be used to display the very same product description, so it's not very memory efficient. 
so what can be done to improve here? Uh, we can take this huge list item and split it into smaller chunks. Uh, thanks to that, when we scroll the list and uh, the views, especially I care here uh, about the views that contain an image, those views can be moved into the pool. Uh, of course, on those views, we can uh, call clear before they are uh, moved into the pool in on view recycled. Um, that way, uh, the references to bitmaps are not, uh, not no longer key. Um, and after that, this view can be reused to display another bitmap. Uh, okay, so I use those three findings and I'll find some fixes in the wrap. And what were the results of those changes? I saw some improvement, but unfortunately on low-end devices, it was still not enough. On those devices, I needed to take more drastic measures to get rid of out-of-memory errors, and I found a way to reduce memory consumed by bitmaps by, by half on those low-end devices. Uh, have, how have I done that? I just simply decreased image quality for users with low-end devices. Um, in our app, we use ARGB HHHH image quality, uh, that needs four bytes to encode one pixel. But there's an alternative, RGB fix, uh, 565 uh, quality, which needs only two bytes to encode one pixel. Uh, so 50% less. Uh, it's not for free, obviously. Uh, this quality does not support transparency. And you can sometimes spot that images are not that perfect, especially on gradients. But to be honest, the decreasing quality is not that visible, even on gradients. I'm not even sure if you can see it on the stream. I tried to show it to you. I even zoomed on in, uh, each image a bit, but um, as you can see, the difference in quality is hardly noticeable, especially if you use lower quality on low-end devices alone. And the difference in image size is, well, significant. So how, how to change it? Um, Glade uses the slower quality by default, so you don't really have to change anything if you haven't already. Uh, but if you want to use higher quality or just add some logic to set lower quality only to the users with low end devices, uh, you can do it. Uh, and you can do it uh, in Glide module uh, like that. In Picasso, it's the other way around. Uh, they use higher quality by default. Uh, but of course, you can change it while setting Picasso instance. Uh, okay, so just to quickly sum up all the things I talked about. <laughs> uh, Glide and Picasso clear resources in on destroy, but you can manually on, uh, clear them on stop if you're sure that images will reload when user comes back to the screen. Um, because of how recycle view works, you can consider manually freeing images from the memory on your recycle, especially if you use lists with multiple view types. Uh, if you see that some items on your list uh, are very high, especially if they hardly even fit on the screen, uh, you can consider splitting them into smaller chunks. And you want quick results and don't need transparency, you can just reduce image quality, uh, especially for users with, in lo with low, low end devices. Okay, so that will, would be all. Uh, you can ask me some question on Slido or also you can find me on Medium if you want. Uh, here is my email if you want to write, write to me. And if you want to join our team at Allegro, just check out our job page here. Uh, so that would be all. I think I will, uh, I will show your questions. Or should I just uh, just uh, show the link to Slido? Okay, here. Um, how to prevent those uh, issues from happening again? Uh, sorry, oh, I made a little inception. Uh, well, how to prevent those issues uh, from happening again? Um, well, uh, well, it's. Uh, it's really hard, especially if you work on a really big, big project, uh, uh, because 
well you you just have to well i, I don't know just uh, looking at uh, at your call at uh, pull request and i don't know maybe maybe educating everyone because i, I think in big projects you are well not not able to to see everything and to like uh, uh well uh well, it's it's really hard <laughs> basically and uh and i i'm not i'm not sure what what else to tell to you uh for for you uh again yes my, my cat really enjoyed this presentation they also uh well, well uh they <clears throat> okay uh so maybe the the next question um um if you uh if you if you don't mind i i would just uh i would just answer the the new new, new one about uh, how to determine the device's low end in your app we just simply uh checked uh, what version of android they have and uh, uh, how how much ram uh, uh ram they have available but we didn't uh, hard code it in into our app so it's um, it's like part of the configuration, really. Um, and uh, the, the the next question, maybe the, the one from the top. Uh, yes, the cat definitely wants the applause. Uh, <laughs> if the image is already loaded from Glide and uh, it is crawled and you want to replace the image, double one, it will load again. Um, Yes, uh, this, the image, when we're scrolling uh, the list, uh, the image will reload, but it will reload. Uh, um, it, uh, it, the, the whole point was that uh, to show that, um, uh, well, because of this image will reload, we don't need this, uh, the reference to those meetups be kept when we have. Uh, uh when, when we uh move those views to the recycle view pools because those uh, those view will be um uh will be reloaded uh if, if you do it or not it's uh, it doesn't really matter uh so okay i think i'm out of time <laughs> uh so uh, okay, so I guess I'll th thank you for now, and I will uh, I, I, I will answer your question later. I, I guess on Slack or or <laughs> okay. Thanks. Uh, so bye. Thanks.